this video we will discuss the problem jump game the problem says that we have been given a positive integer n and a list of n integers so basically you'll be given an array which will consist of n integers and each element in the array denotes the length of the jump that you can cover okay so let us take this example let's say one let's say the array is one then two then zero and after that we have three and zero and then zero so if you're here if you're standing at two then either you can take a jump of one or you can take a jump of two that is possible similarly if you are standing at three so either you can take a jump of one two or three so that this is what the array of i means now what you have to do is you have to find out if uh, if you can make the jump to the last index if you start at the first index of the list so let us try and see so suppose i start from this one so if i if i'm starting from this so i can see that if i'm starting here so if i take a jump of one then i reach one and there is no other kind of jump that i can take so from this two if i take a jump of one then i reach to this zero and if i reach to this zero then i will not be able to take any further jumps so in that case this will not be valid but instead if of taking a jump of one if i take a jump of two then i reach to this three and when i reach to this three so from here you can see if i take this jump then i wouldn't be able to reach the end of the array but if i take this jump then i will be able to reach this array and similarly if I, like basically i can take a jump of three from here so that is not available here but if i can take a jump of uh, at least two that is this like this and this so i can reach it so in this case i will say that okay i can reach it because from here if i take a jump to this last zero then i will be able to reach it okay let us understand this uh, with the help of the second example as well so suppose the second example is like one then zero and then two where n is equal to three so three elements are given so in this case what we can say here is we have this zero like we, we are starting from this one so if we take a jump so we reach to this now from here we cannot take any further jumps so that means we will not be able to reach the end and for this case we will return a zero so how can we do this particular question so the first approach that comes to our mind is basically if you will observe if you observe suppose that i am standing at a particular index three so that means what that means that if i am currently at the index i so i can take a jump of i plus one i can take a jump of i plus two or i can take a jump to i plus three right basically i can take a jump of one or i can take a jump of two or i can take a jump of three that depends on the array right so this is what i have to notice in this particular part so focusing on this we can observe that we can write a recursive function and we can say that what we can say is initially we can start a recursion from the zeroth index and we will pass the array will pass n and in the inside the recursive function if it happens that uh, my i is equal equal to n minus 1 if i reach the end in that case i can simply return a true okay and otherwise i need to see that what are the circumstances so otherwise i can say that what is the jump that i can take okay so otherwise i can say that i can take k kinds of jumps so i will start from where i'll start from the index i plus 1 correct because uh, because if i'm standing at i so i'll do i plus 1 and like that and till where where maximum i can go suppose i am currently i so i can take a jump of 3 maximum so i can go move to either i plus 1 i plus 2 or i plus 3 so i can say that k is lesser equal to nothing but uh, the array of i that is there plus the i and k plus plus okay so these are the various kind of jumps so i'll check for each jump i'll again pass it in the recursive function so this is recursive of i comma a comma n okay so if if it happens that at certain point of time if the recur if the recurs if this function uh, for this uh, for this k the the jump that the index that i'm moving and a comma n if it checks and it returns me a true in that case i can say that okay this jump is possible and i can simply return a true otherwise i will return a false from this particular function so that is the basic approach basically i'll be checking for every possible i right if suppose currently i am at 3 right a is like the current element is 3 so in that case i can say that if i'm standing at the ith index so i can move to i plus 1 i can move to i plus 2 and i can move to i plus 3 so that is what my k will be doing so let us try and write this code first of all and see what happens so what we'll be basically doing here is we will say that we can simply return here we can simply return the recursive function here and we can pass 0 in it and we can pass array and we can pass n so let me take the a as a small here and let's take the n part now what we would do is we would simply say that uh, a bool recursive function will be there which will return either true or false uh, whether i can reach the end or not so if i'm at the ith index and i'm passing the array and i'm also passing the number of elements right so if i reach the last element that is if i is equal equal to n minus one in that case if i reach it so i will return a true that okay i can reach it otherwise what i will try to do is i'll say that what is the jump that i can take so i'll say that for 
my int uh, k is going to start from i plus 1 because i am going to start to take the jumps from the next index till where i can take the jump so k is lesser equal to rfi plus i okay if i'm standing at the ith index and suppose rfi is equal to 3 so i can go maximum till i plus 3 okay then i'll do a k plus plus and what i'll what i'll do is in this i'll call the recursive function for every k so for i'll pass the k i'll pass the array uh, let's take the, this as a only i'll pass the k i'll pass the array and i'll pass this n value as well okay now what happens uh, suppose uh, if this recursive function returns me a true so that means it keeps on checking and it returns me a true so that means the that i have reached the end and that is possible in that case i will immediately return a true and suppose in the end if i am not able to do it from this particular recursive call in that case i will return a false that is what the recursive approach looks like let us try and compile this okay so we are getting a compilation error so it is saying line number 27 is there something yeah we missed the colon let us write it okay so we are getting the same output let us try and submit this code as well i think it will get accepted okay now this is what we are doing now we can do one thing like you can observe like for every ith index we are trying to iterate through this we are trying to iterate through uh, all the possible jumps that we can make and that is that makes the complexity order of n square and if we want to further optimize it so we can say that we can use dp right we can say that uh, we can say that we can use dp of 10 to the power 5 like 1 0 0 0 uh, like 5 like this 1 2 3 4 5 yeah and then what we can do is we can say that if the ith call right we can say that if it happens that the dp of i is not equal we can here initialize it to minus one and then we can say that if this particular state uh, of i is calculated already then you don't calculate it again but even we if we do this uh, then the memoization also takes order like if, even if, if we do it like that so it takes order of n square time and that is a lot but we can do it linearly as well like i'll, I'll first of all write the dp solution here so what we'll uh, what we can do here is we can try to optimize this that if like we'll say that we'll initialize all the states as minus one so that we don't calculate it again and again so like the dp of minus one comma uh size of dp okay so basically i'll first of all initialize all the variables as minus one and then what i'll do is i'll check that if it happens that the dp of uh, i is not equal to minus one if it is already calculated right so if it's already calculated in that case if it's already calculated then what you do is you simply return what you simply return the calculated value otherwise what you do is you calculate it and then store it so instead of true i can say one because in the array i'll be storing only digits so it's not a bool error so what i'll do is dp of i is equal to this and then return it okay i'll store it and then return it similarly here i'll store it and then return it so that the next time i do not have to calculate it again let's try and compile this seems to work on the samples if we submit it it will also get accepted now this approach is the memoize approach and it is order of n square but we can optimize it further to order of n as well so let us try and see what we can do so suppose we have this array 1 2 0 3 and 0 okay suppose we have 1 2 0 then 3 and then 0 0 okay so what we will say is that what is the maximum reach that we can have okay we will say that initially we'll mark it like initially while we'll mark m as one right uh, initially mx is equal to nothing but a of zero initially we can reach till here right we'll say that because we'll start from here and then we'll say that if we are here so what is the maximum reach that i can make so maximum reach that i can make is like what is the maximum number of jumps so if you see from here i can reach here right from here i can maximum go till here so that means if i can go till here so that means i can also reach the end right so every time what I'll do is I'll see that what is the maximum reachable index for me. Like what, what is the maximum reach that I can have from a particular index. If I see this one, so this one can give me a maximum reach till here. This two can give a maximum reach to me uh, till, this, till this, this point of time. And this three can give me a reach maximum till here. So that means this and this will also get covered, right? So basically that is the concept that what I'll do is I'll try to find the maximum reach that I can have. And if my maximum uh, reach in the end is greater or equal to n, uh, n minus one, if it is greater or equal to the last index of the array, then I that, that means that I can reach it. So let us try and, and dry run this. So suppose I mark it as a of zero. Then what I will do is I'll say that my, my mx is this. Now I'll start from this index, okay? When I start from this index, so what I can what can I say? I can say that if I'm starting from this index, so basically that means that if I'm starting here, so I will start from this. Now the moment I start from this, so I'll say that let's calculate the maximum reach that I can have. So the maximum reach will be nothing but the maximum reach up till now, 
because I'm I'm not sure whether I can like it. It might happen that it might happen that this index is giving me a jump of three, and suppose this index is giving me a jump of two only. So I'll always take the maximum, right? If if this index gives me a jumps of let's say these are several other indexes, uh, and this index gives me a jumps of one only, and this index gives me a jump till this index. So I'll show the maximum, right? That maximum uh, that I can make, maximum reachable index. Okay, so that is what I'll do. So I'll I'll say what I'll say here that what we need to do is mx is equal to nothing but maximum of mx comma i plus a of i. Okay, why we are doing i plus a of i? We are sim simply doing i plus a of i uh, because we are simply doing i plus a of i because that is the maximum that we can reach. If we are here, if we are starting at the index i, so we can reach maximum reach till i plus uh, i plus a of i. Right, that is what where we can reach. So that is what we are doing. Now if we observe here. So if we do the indexing part, so let's say this is the index one, this is index two, this is index three, this is index four, index five. Okay. So if we observe, so what is the current maximum, right? Uh, we are always updating it. So currently the maximum was initially one. Then what happens if I am at this index? So I can reach till where? I can I can say that if I am at the index two and I take a jump of one, so the maximum now that I can reach is still three. Okay. Then I reach this zero. So I can observe in this zero part that if I am at this zero, so I cannot move any further. Like I cannot move. But if I see here. So from here, what is the, what does my maximum get updated to? My maximum gets updated to. You can observe this part, right? Now, like if I'm if maximum till here is three. So if this is even zero, so I don't I do not care much because if even this is zero, so that means from here I cannot make a jump, right? So this is an invalid index for me. But I can say that I can make a jump of three. So that means instead of jumping jumping from two to this part. I, I can take a jump of this, right? I can take a jump of this. That is what my maximum reach indicates. That if that is what it is, and I will update it. Now I move to this. So once I move to this, so I can say that the maximum now gets updated to what? It gets updated to six because three is at the index which I am at, and I can take a jump of three from that index. So it will become what? It will become nothing but six, right? So that means if I can take this jump till here, so I can always take a jump from here here. So I can say that if it happens that the maximum. Reaches what? If the maximum is uh, greater than equal to n minus one, then it is always possible, and I'll, I'll return a true. Otherwise, I'll return a false. Okay. Now let us check for another case and see. So if in in the in the sample test case that we took here, like one two zero, okay, like one two zero, and then three zero and zero. So we had to observe one thing. The thing was that if we were somewhere here, right? If if we were here. So the maximum that we could reach is nothing but uh, like if the index is zero, one. So maximum that we could reach is uh, like this index, two and three, this index. Okay. But if we reach here, right? So if we reach here, so we cannot move any further. But why? Why did we not stop? Because we knew that there is a previous jump that can help us to go to a better index. Right. That is the case. Now, so that is why we we reached here and then we can say that okay, the maximum now gets updated to six, which is greater than the n minus one at index. Okay. But in this case, we also need to observe. Suppose the the if we talk about the second test case that has been given to us, so I think the second test case is something like one zero and two. Okay, so if it is a one zero and two, so in that case, what we can do, do is we have this index zero, value one, value two, and if we observe here, so what will happen? Initially, the maximum will be one because I'm starting from here, then I'm at this index. So can I take a jump from this index? Like if if I say that if I reach this index, so basically from one. I can reach to this index, okay? I can reach to this index, and the moment I reach this index, okay? So my maximum is, is still one. So I can I can observe one thing that now I cannot move any further. That basically now from here I cannot move to this, okay? Uh, if if I have to check because the maximum is, is still one, the maximum that I can go is one, and I cannot move any further, right? Because when I when I come to this index, so can I reach index two actually? No, because the maximum that I can reach is only one. So in that case, I'll say that if like if it happens that the maximum is always greater than equal to i, then only I'll be able to reach that index. Otherwise, I'll not be able to reach that index. Okay. And in the end, what I need to check is I need to check, right? You you must be clear with this part that if I'm here. Right, if my maximum is one, so if I'm, I can maximum reach till here. So if I talk about the index i is equal to two, so my maximum is not two. I cannot reach this index two actually. So that is why my maximum, if my maximum is always greater or equal to the index i, then only I can reach this. So my maximum index currently is one. So I cannot reach this two index two because my maximum is my maximum reach is not this much. So if if it happens that my maximum reach is uh, greater or equal to i, then only I can reach that particular index and I can update my mx. Otherwise, I cannot update it. Okay, and in the end, I will simply check that if the maximum is greater or equal to uh, n minus uh, n minus one. In that case, I will return a true. Otherwise, I will return a false. Okay, so let us try and code this down. So what I'll be having is I'll be having the maximum reach that I can have. Initially, I'll initialize it to let's say a of zero. Okay, so then what I'll do is 
then what we'll do is we'll iterate we'll start the iteration so we'll start iterating from the next thing so i is equal to one i is lesser than n that's size of the array then i plus plus for all the indexes we'll be iterating and what we need to check is always we need to check that if if it happens that i is less or equal to the mx so if i can reach this this particular index right if i if i can if i can take a jump till this index or if i can take a jump of uh, more than this index then only i can consider this, this index so i'll say that mx is equal to nothing but maximum of what mx comma i plus a of i okay this is what i can do uh, so that is how i'll be updating my mx so every time i'll see what is the maximum jump that i will get i will get and in the end if i check so if my maximum jump that i can take is greater or equal to the index n minus one if it is greater or equal to n minus one then we can say that i can simply return a one that is indicating true that i can reach it else if it is not possible then i will return a zero indicating that i cannot reach it and it will be false let us try and compile this code seems to work on the samples let us submit this so you can see that our solution got accepted and for solving this problem we took order of n time complexity and order of one space so in case if you understood this problem so make sure to hit the like button and comment down understood as well thank you